Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Victoria 3 uh, run as the United States of America. Uh, last episode we fought the Civil War and we took our dirt back from Mexico. This episode we will be completing Manifesting the Destiny by first getting all this dirt and then we will be living our best lives as the USA. We are poised to economically crank up. We have low taxes right now as trying to push, uh, you know, this reconstruction, which is maybe not optimal, but we're trying to get through the journal entry, uh, and we do, we are well on our way for reconstruction, but also, once we do this, we're gonna have a crank up, we are gonna be producing so much construction, really, really expecting to pop off this episode. Also, we're coming in on steel frame buildings, which is one of the best technologies now, uh, and once we get steel frame, we might go down into, uh, getting another company, or we might come back and make a little bit of a push for pump jacks in order to go oil. Probably one of these two. Uh, but for now, we will look and find ourselves a nice little war. We already have a decent amount of infamy, so it doesn't have to be a big war. It can be a little war, a nice war. Uh, after, you know, two fairly big ones against Mexico, uh, New Granada, and Mexico again. Uh, or sorry, Mexico, and then, the, or sorry, Civil War, Mexico, and then against New Granada uh, and Mexico combined. And so it was a bit of a, a lot of fights we are really enjoying having, or it seems quite strong for us to be having, you know, one army dedicated to skirmish, uh, always on defense, and then another army, mobile RD and lancers, always dedicated on offense. So we decided to go after Nejd, uh, of course American flags all abound. Uh, the main reason is they eventually will have quite a bit of oil, the Ottomans intervened, but all we have to do is just land Nejd, we didn't put any war goals in on the Ottomans, the Ottomans have no war goals on us. And so, you know, uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward here. We'll, we will just repeatedly reland them. We landed them with a defensive army that's just staying put. And now we have our offensive army landing in Nejd. Uh, Nejedi Hale, and so that should be pretty good. And we get the event here for the last vestiges of Native American rule have been stamped out, leaving only the Dominion of the USA, uh, and we gain homelands on all of this area, which is big nice. And also, if I am not mistaken, we'll open up a new journal entry for us uh, to get, uh, you know, the first transcontinental railway. We will put that in our thing, and I think we can eventually negotiate uh, a purchase of this area here. I'm not sure exactly exactly uh the conditions which allow us to purchase the columbia district but this is something that we want kind of moving forward into the future here and here we have it the oregon treaty event in new york uh great britain has agreed to our reasonable terms and ceded washington oregon and idaho to the united states our de destiny will be manifested uh they lose their claims we gain the stuff uh, most importantly the stuff and now we have a very nice looking usa um i'm pretty sure the trigger for this is us having good relations which of course we do because we're inside their market and we have been careful to improve relations um, pretty consistently, but this is a cause for concern, um, you know, that they are looking at us in this way, uh, is going to maybe bring an end to this, uh, you know, absolutely massive, uh, pop-off in regards to population. Look at our population. We have so many in Pennsylvania, uh, and if we look at the cultures map, uh, it looks like it's India. And so, um, we might lose access to this, which would be a bit unfortunate, uh, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, in particular, let's take a look at who their rivals are, uh, and see if we can maybe rival some of their rivals. So they do have a rivalry with France. France is protective it wouldn't be terrible for us to be in France's market as well um, but we will try and maintain good relations and it's very tempting to try and rival someone uh, rival France damage relations and this sort of thing but we'll just hope that the UK doesn't boot us doesn't toot us and boot us and yeah the Ottomans aren't letting us out of this war, so we are going to try and carve our way out through them. Um, or, yeah, this might not be working so well, and we might just have to wait for them to be willing to give up stuff. Uh, for whatever reason, at minus 100, it is not giving us, uh, you know, the bag, which it should be, unless they are somehow, uh, they are a protectorate of the Ottomans now. And so we have a transfer, and so we do need to enforce on their overlord. That is a bit unfortunate, because that's going to be complicated from our Navy perspective. We might have to split up two navies in order to do this and land in two spots. 
or we could just repeatedly land on the Ottomans. We don't have any war goals specifically on the Ottomans, they just don't agree with this. Um, and so we might have to, yeah, we're gonna try and figure out a way to do this. A little bit unfortunate because we would have put war goals in on the Ottomans had we known uh, we were gonna need to enforce on them in this way. So it looks like this entire thing actually might be bugged out, which is a bit unfortunate uh, because now we can't transfer Nez now that Ottomans are somehow out of the war. Um, but they're still, they still appear to be in the war. Uh, they're still on the allies list. I don't know exactly what conditions we need in order to, uh, you know, get them enforced on, but they can't transfer. If, if we can't transfer, which we uh, seem to not be able to, uh, because Nejd is not the leader of the war goal, we'll just set them to white peace. Actually, can we ban slavery? We'll just ban slavery. There we go. That's something, I guess. Uh, but we really should have Nejd, and so it's a bit annoying that we don't have Nejd. What the hell? Why don't we... We propose this deal, it says you accept this deal. Are we just stuck in a forever war? Hmm. All right. Okay, it seems that the war is categorically bugged, and so we will be trying to load to a save that is earlier than this uh, and playing from there. Currently churning through the queue, we have a ton of logging camps, uh, which we are going to wanna, we are, the main reason we're churning these through is because we are planning on taking out this company. And so we do wanna establish it as being, um, you know, or we do wanna make use of the extra construction bonus while we do this. Uh, but logging in particular is one of the strongest industries in the game anyways. And so this is going to really, really help a lot, especially it's really good at de-peasanting pops and also moving things in a cap more capitalist -y direction, which is good for us given how strong our rural folk are, mainly off the back of, well, we do have two agitators, but it's mainly off the back of an enormous amount of subsistence farms from an enormous amount of migration. So this is coming to bite us to some extent, because even in our biggest like industrial center, we still have a ton of, uh, you know, subsistence farms occupied. And if we take a look here, you know, this is a, the sub farms are really occupied up, which is giving us both a lot of population, sure, uh, but also, you know, and GDP as well, but also it is giving us a lot of clout onto the rural folk, which does make things a little bit complicated, especially when we get, like, guys like this, who's an authoritarian, which is maybe not exactly what we would want. So, uh, by building a bunch of logging camps, we will move clout more in the direction of the industrialist's hands, so that'll help out. So we have gone after Bremen and made them a protectorate, and now we will be going after Hamburg, making them a protectorate, which should allow us to form the Confederation of the Rhine as a subject which we can vassal feed. And so this is kind of a new feature that you can do in 1.5. I think it's going to be fairly meta and will allow you to intervene in German affairs by forming a confederation of the Rhine, so we'll go after them. Hanover tried to help Bremen, they'll probably try and help Hamburg, considering I think they're in the same customs union, but I very much doubt it's going to be work. We're also in a pretty good spot to go monarchy here, which is, you know, fine for us, mainly off the back of the fact that, um, we really don't like presidential republic, we'd rather be parliamentary, and so I think we're going to make a stint in that monarchy and then try and swatch, swap back to parliamentary later. We have a couple authoritarians, and so uh, why don't we get this in while we can, and then we'll make the swap back later. Hopefully nothing bad will happen. Um, you know, it would be maybe somewhat sensible to try and uh, find Emperor Norton, or Mr. Norton, uh, if we took a look. Uh, he is a, he's one of these guys, but we don't see Norton and maybe this isn't the uh, kind of the run for getting Emperor Norton uh, and so but we will be going monarchy at the very least. Just to be a little clear uh, Emperor Norton is an achievement as the USA become a monarchy with Joshua Norton as the monarch and so we're gonna go for monarchy but I don't think we're gonna be getting Joshua Norton is mainly what I mean to be saying there. It also is looking like we're not going to get a readmission of the secession estate. Again, not a big deal because we don't really need Dixie to be a primary culture. Uh, and we are super okay getting African American as a primary culture, which will be much stronger because we can incorporate, um, you know, African states in five years instead. And so this is the big one that's functionally quite different. Um, also, Hanover did join and uh, they are getting clapped. And this is a huge inflection point for us getting onto steel frame buildings. So we've been kind of waiting for this pop-off. Uh, we've been running low taxes. We've been like, hey, maybe reconciliation. Nope. Uh, we're not gonna be able to get these guys into loyalist mode. We are going to up the taxes and we are going to look to absolutely blast, blast, blast 
uh, in the Tanu construction level. So first of all, we're gonna go steel frame buildings where we are producing an enormous amount of steel. We see here that glass is really expensive. That will probably be our first throttle, uh, but we're gonna come in on Alabama and also turn on in Alabama steel frame buildings, which should almost shortage, it does shortage glass. Uh, we will build into this shortage and we will be building some glass here because we know we have lead mines here. So that'll be uh, pretty productive we're going to put a few of these at the front of the queue um, and look to kind of work that out. And we will be absolutely blasting construction. We had 250 10, sec 10 seconds ago. Now we have 400. And so this is the pop-off inflection point uh, of getting steel frame buildings. Now, as far as the tech goes, we kind of have two options. We can go to Pump Jacks or we can go for another company. I think we're going to go for another company uh, considering uh, we have a bit more spread to be doing uh, here in Society Tech. And we will kind of be ensuring that we get um, some more spread. So we are going to go for investment banks as our next thing. And by ensure we have more spread, if we research all of the all of the techs in front of our ahead of time research, then we will run the risk of not not spreading a tech. Uh, the reason we don't want to research dynamite is if dynamite's the only tech someone else researches, um, then we will uh, kind of brick ourselves in getting technology spread in specifically the production tree. And so to kind of try and ensure that we, uh, you know, uh, gets our tech spread uh, on production we are going to be going for this first and also this is a pretty good one getting into investment banks and mutual funds will help us to eat out uh, the clout of the rural folk as will all of this construction so the pop-off here it begins. Very notable, as soon as we got on the iron frame buildings and we started making the swap, we did start generating productivity in our steel company, uh, the Pennsylvania Steel Syndicate, which is going to give us the very, very strong prosperity bonus of plus 10% state construction efficiency. You know, on the back of all this, uh, steel frame building might be the best tier three tech, uh, you know, because not only is it going to allow you to uh, concentrate uh, by this plus five construction sector max level, concentrate all your construction construction in an area that uh, has a lot of resources, like for us, Pennsylvania. Uh, it will also make the PM better, which will further effectively concentrate the amount you're spending in a place where you have iron, coal, and plus X, possibly plus X, like, uh, you know, Alabama has plus lead. So Alabama is a place we've been building up in. We're going to add a few more of these, a few more of these, and we are also going to put in some steel, just one, because we do want to have a lot of throughput on our steel overall, uh, because with the throughput, actually, you know what, this is perhaps less important, but um, throughput will increase productivity, uh, generally speaking, but the price of uh, steel in Alabama will be tall, so we're, we'll, we're fine uh, kind of putting that in here. Um, but it is going to be really, really good because now we will be getting 10% state construction efficiency everywhere in addition to, you know, near doubling our construction here. So we went after Tripolitania. Uh, they do provide our quite a bit of oil eventually, and um, it also gives us native interest here in North Africa, which frees up another interest. Also, we have three days on reconstruction, and so we're about to get the news on how this is going to shake out. Uh, we are going to choose the one that gives us less radicals from discrimination. There is no no shout, no way that we, uh, you know, fulfill readmitting the secessionist states, which is going to make it so that we discriminate or we no longer have as our primary culture uh, as Dixie, uh, but we do get African American as our primary culture, which is the primary thing we want from Reconstruction, which now means we can incorporate places, uh, you know, like Zululand in five years uh, instead of 20, which is, you know, the main attraction of being able to go um, African American as your primary primary culture. And so we finished um, kind of the important inflection point there, uh, just to kind of give a little bit of an update on our interest, because we have been talking about that. This is where our interests currently look. And you can see every single place we have orange is a place where we have we ha a place where we have a native interest as the result of, uh, you know, subjugating someone. And so this is going to help us out quite a bit. I think we're going to throw down in Japan. A lot of people like to go after Japan. I think Russia went after Japan earlier. And so we might be able to get something from Japan by offering to defend Japan. So this is uh, one of the main ideas here. Um, and yeah, we got reconstruction and we have, you know, a broad, very nice looking United States of America. Now that we have finished colonizing, you know, we have the whole shebang, the big bad manifested destiny America.
We have come here to Illinois and we have turned off Bone China and instead are prioritizing glass production. This is the tallest glass building and doing this will allow us to complete the swap to steel frame buildings on everything and we will now have doubled construction in quite a short time period, up to 500. You can see already the curve of our line is starting to look up. You really don't quite want it linear, you want it really exponential looking. And so even though it looks like it's chugging up, we would prefer to have flat and then up. But here you can see the uptick that is the result of us getting onto steel frame buildings, expanding construction, and we will continue in that direction, now having doubled construction. I think that we probably would have been better served um, you know, rather than trying to keep uh, uh, taxes low in order to uh, try and maybe pip uh, enough uh, loyalists to get rid of, uh, do the full reconstruction, the ideal reconstruction. Uh, we did this and it would have been preferable uh, to just be building this entire time. Uh, but now we're now it's time to crank up. Now it's time to turn up. We have exiled a leader uh, from one of these Ludites and invited uh, this gentleman here, who is a member of the Royal Folk and a reformer. Uh, he also has charismatic uh, and political operator. He's pretty popular as well, which will help out. And we are going to give him uh, leadership of the party. And the reason why we're doing this, primarily speaking, is uh, this is the president. We want this gentleman to be president instead. And this will help out on that front because I believe uh, next election this guy will go through. This guy is the guy who's going to end up being the king. And we would, I think, rather he didn't be the king, although he's not terrible. Um, I think we would rather have this guy and the reformer boyo will also allow us to uh, try and get rid of child labor uh, as time goes on. Um, I do believe we are going to need to go human rights to do this one, but I think we can do restricted child labor right now um, after we do monarchy. But I wanted to get this in before monarchy um, so that we can, I'm not sure if it replaces this guy immediately. I guess it does not replace the president immediately, but soon, uh, next election at least, we will replace the president. And how could we possibly forget? get with steel frame buildings we also get the statue of liberty which will give us extra migration attraction which will continue to be very powerful we'll kick that in the front of the queue and kick ourselves uh for not putting this in later it gives tw or earlier we did put it in later uh for not this is going to give us 25 percent migration attraction globally on all of our provinces which is going to help us to you know hoover back off some of these pops from you know the great british uh, market even faster than before um, moving forward, we would kind of want to be in the same market as Ching. Uh, this is going to be a bit difficult, though, unless we can figure out a way uh, that we can, uh, you know, unless we want to try and leave, go out on our own, leave the Great British market and try and get Ching in that way, which is probably a long term what we want to do. But for now, we just going to chill. So we see ourselves here presented with a rather nice opportunity which is uh, going to be trying to help Oldenburg uh, avoid getting annexed uh, so that we might be able to get them down somewhere down the road with our Confederation of the Rhine. So I'm thinking we are going to be moving in that direction uh, of helping them. Unfortunately, we can't get anything very good from them and we don't have a lot of infamy ourselves. And so what we are going to need to do is we are going to need to find a diplomatic play that interests us uh, for us to start before we come in to try and help um, you know, Oldenburg resist, and also what we are going to end up doing is we are going to end up expanding the military quite a bit here, um, and we are going to expend out a lot of infantry only, um, and the main idea is that all we have to do is defend, 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 uh, and they will exhaust their forces, and then we can just comfortably land them with our landing party, uh, and then push in Prussia and get war reps or something small off of them, uh, while, you know, preserving the territorial integrity of Oldenburg. So we decided to go for Chile as a protectorate, as our, you know, means of accruing some infamy because this war will take a little bit. Uh, but we see we're off to a great start where we can defend quite soundly uh, with, you know, the 50-ish troops we have here uh, going into or being assaulted by 130k troops because a lot of their units are also all infantry. And if they're all on skirmish 
and we're on skirmish. Uh, so they're pushing, you know, these dinky infantry into our really honky, uh, like, good defending infantry. Um, and what I mean by this, if we take a look at, you know, just let's take a look at a unit. The American Defense Force we have here. Uh, the offense is plus 15. This is skirmish. This is what they have. And the defense is plus 35. So they're pushing their plus 15 guys into our plus 35 guys. So even though they have a huge numerical advantage, they're not going to make a dent. Uh, furthermore, once we finish dealing with, uh, you know, down here, dealing with Chile, which we should be able to land, we will then send our landing party, which doesn't have any skirmish infantry. Notably, it has cannons and lancers, which I think when they nerf it to make it so that you can't build more than 50% cannons, I think this is what they have in mind. I think half cannons, half lancers, whatever it looks like, uh, is going to be, you know, pretty strong in the early game, and then it falls off because there's no upgrade to lancers until you get to tanks. Uh, but we're just going to be able to land these in Pomerania, and then push into Brandenburg here, and it should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we get a war Z something -y. Yeah. Okay, so this war, we get kind of, or we see our way out of it. Oldenburg's still at war with Prussia, but uh, Prussia enforces on Hanover. Um, we were making progress, uh, but then something bigger came up, and so... We decided to exit this, which of course is our American Peasant Revolt. Um, we could have come off of our law pass of monarchy in order to get this through, uh, but I think it was more important that we did, uh, that we, how should I say, I think it was more important um, that we will would eventually find some way to kind of go after the clout of the rural folk, which were way too strong. Um, and so now we have a situation where we have President Edward Cox. However, we have an election coming up. So instead of uh, passing monarchy, um, well, we're not going to pass monarchy uh, immediately. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to make a government that is illegitimate. Uh, and we are going to do this just for the purpose of uh, us not making any progress towards passing monarchy. So if we do something like this and we click confirm... Uh, yep, yeah, we will have a ton of radicals. This is true, uh, but we will gain no progress towards monarchy because we have an illegitimate government, and we can wait until after this election. We can wait until after this election to put someone in power uh, so that we can uh, get a pr uh, king that is not the rural folk, which is preferable, I think, especially not this Edward Cox guy. Plus, he's leading a revolution against us. We don't like that, etc., mostly etc. We also have uh, this interesting uh, kind of... Uh, thing coming in here. Uh, Russia's offering us a change to the customs union. Uh, we are going to say no, but it is an interesting one because Russia often absorbs Great Xing into the customs union. And finally, um, we have decided to sway, uh, you know, onto our side, the French Republic, uh, giving them an obligation. I think we win this without them, but we almost certainly win it with them. And so we will be getting ready. These guys are going to Arabia because they don't know what they're doing, but we will be getting ready to uh, have at the, uh, the being our American peasant revolt and uh hopefully we can get in here and uh you know get something done uh that's probably going to be the capital it is the capital and we will be on our way hey 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 we get abraham lincoln as our president here so now we are going to take our free reform we are going to use it and we're going to put the pb and uh the industrialists in government and now we will pass and make uh, Abraham Lincoln Emperor Lincoln, which of course is, uh, you know, going to be big nice having Emperor Lincoln, uh, who is uh, an inspire, uh, in inspirational order, uh, but this is going to be great for us. Now we will pass monarchy. It will full pass instantly. Um, we, we, we kind of have a pretty good situation on the fronts uh, with the amount that France is helping us out. Of course, people are asleep at the wheel here. Uh, these guys were going to Arabia for whatever reason, uh, but ooh, what is this? This is excellent timing. We haven't passed monarchy yet. All right. So we get he who would be king, a resident of California in the region. Joshua Norton has declared himself emperor. He began issuing his own decrees, and the people have printed currency with his likeness. Unfortunately, okay, so we're going to... Hmm. Okay, we're going to let him be here, but here's the problem... Lincoln is Joshua Norton. We would love to grant leadership and have him... Oh my god, this is complicated now. So we could have Emperor Lincoln and just let this law go through. Or we could drag the entire law for three years, have another election, basically infinite radicals over the course of those three years. 
right? Uh, but then we would have Emperor Norton. You know, I just feel like it's maybe not that worth it. And we would be okay having Emperor Abraham Lincoln. Um, it is an achievement. It is the Mimi. This would be fairly easy way for us to be able to go about it, uh, especially because we have, uh, you know, powerful petite bourgeoisie right now, uh, which is maybe hard to get, and maybe this is, like, um, uh, an opportunity that is a lot more difficult than normal. We're actually going to have to think about whether we want to uh, try and do president. Man, the, the election timing was just terrible. Our next election is in uh, four years, so if we want to just not pass a law for four years and then get uh that or we could have emperor lincoln hmm all right we're going with half headless emperor lincoln and my justification for this is relatively simple and i heard as it were the noise of thunder and i looked and behold was death So we're going to be going Emperor Lincoln because he hunts vampires and Norton doesn't, obviously. And so just a little bit of a tick here, 100% chance of getting us in the monarchy. We now have Emperor of the United Sovereign Arch Archduchy, Abraham Lincoln, abolitionist. He's about to abolish your head from your shoulders if you happen to be a vampire. Under the stalwart leadership of Abraham Lincoln, we put down the American Civil War. Emperor Lincoln classic American history. So we unlock investment banks, which maybe means we actually don't need to get rid of our wood company, which was kind of the plan for a hot minute, uh, because we wanted to make room for a new company, but instead we will be able to keep it. Um, I'm not sure okay yeah the one we wanted to make is well actually we do have a bit of an inflection point we have a ton of gold actually and i was thinking you know i was like yeah you know what tools would be really nice and tools would be nice to be fair it is a big portion of our economy um but i think we're gonna leave in the wood for now have the idea of getting rid of the wood for the tools and instead we are gonna go gold here that way we can crank up even more the absolute full bore crank and stink and so this will help out a lot now as far as tech goes i think we're gonna slide back over and make a little bit of a push for pump jacks because we do want to unlock uh oil companies uh relatively early uh so that we can get in there with uh our unique our best unique company which is standard oil uh and so we are going to progress in that direction now we've also completed the statue of liberty which is going to give us enormous amounts of migration and attraction you know if we take a look at texas right now they are receiving migration 392,000, which is, I don't know last time I checked about numbers, but that seems like a big number. Look at all the cultural communities here. Uh, the population attraction is big high. We're getting it from Statue of Liberty, and this is notably all we're getting it from. We're getting 10% from major power, uh, but we have this unused arable land modifier, which is extremely strong and does give a lot of areas a lot of help in that regard. West Virginia, we've actually been having a ton of trouble with um, because they keep on leaving West Virginia. We have a decent amount of buildings here having difficulty um you know employing it on up even though we are growing naturally and so we might need to put down an edict in west virginia we are seeing you know the unused arable land modifier really really crank in a ton of population look at california's come up right um with all these cultural communities getting uh, an enormous amount you know they're pulling even in jobbins and this type of stuff which aren't even in our customs union if we do show more we can see all the different types of pops that are being pulled in here and are making you know a very very strong uh place for us to be able to employ stuff up i'm surprised you're you're hurting for labor what's going on here we'll figure out what's going on they have a ton of peasants so we should be able to find work everyone can find work in lincoln's america lincoln's uh empire of america both colombia and peru bolivia bend the knee at the might of abraham lincoln without a fight 
you know, I'm not trying to say that Lincoln was the very best in terms of what the U United States had to offer in terms of their emperors, but so far he is the best emperor of the United States, and he's been cranking up the construction, man. Uh, and we will continue with that legacy, the legacy of Lincoln. Everyone knows Lincoln was all about construction, and by construction I mean reconstruction, and by reconstruction I mean his head got reconstructed in that theater. But, um, you know, this is a new chance on life, a new lease. Uh, to really ramp up and get to, we started this episode with like 250 construction. I think we're going to end it with a thousand under the economic tutelage of Lincoln Vampire Hunter. And there we have it. 1,000 construction. You know, the deficit, that that's not real. Can't hurt us. We are going commercialized agriculture. But we will conclude the episode here, getting the full and complete borders of, of course, the Empire of America, led by Abraham Lincoln, of course obviously very historic um you know we did fight the civil war which abraham uh, led which of course was historic and he successfully put down his enemies which of course was very very historic and following that we managed a huge economic crank up whose you know crank up in this is just about to be felt because the construction always comes before the gdp pop off and you can see here this gdp is already coming up really big courtesy of steel frame buildings we are starting to get a little exponential looking following we got it right there and then now we have just like added an enormous amount of construction in a very short time period we are going to pop off super hard next episode um you know even though we've popped off enormously hard this episode and it's all thanks to lincoln vampire hunter i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did feel free to like comment subscribe and uh stake a vampire and other than that have a good day